I'm Greg. I'm a sailor, a bagpiper, and an all-around jack-of-all-trades. Back down here in the basement, and project for today is to start stripping the tow rails. Um, we pulled all of the tow rails off the boat, along with the cockpit combings and some of the other interior bright work. My goal right now is to sort of see what it's going to take to clean it up. So here are all of the pieces. This is the stern. There are the port sections of the tow rail. Um, the starboard pieces are up there along with the boom for the Bristol and the boom for my Marshall 15 catboat. <clears throat> but the goal today is to see what we can do with these pieces. Uh, question is what and how to do it. So I've got a nice carbide tipped cabinet scraper. Well, let's start with that. I also have, among all of my other scrapers, some cabinet scrapers of various shapes and sizes. And this curved one probably will be able to fit the cove to help scrape the bottom of the tow rail. I also have a heat gun here, which I'm hoping will be able to soften up some of this material enough to make it easier to scrape off and to get it out. So we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. Well, that seems to work. It's going to be a long, slow process, though. Well, that's looking pretty good. <coughs> Definitely is not mahogany, and it's looking much more like teak.
That looks significantly better. So, stern piece with the running light versus port bow with the running light. <clears throat> I mean, it is not looking like brand new wood, but it is a 40 year old boat. It is not going to, I mean, I do not want to make it perfect because that would be unrealistic. But it looks a whole lot better. The only question now is normally with teak, you know, you can bleach it and get rid of a lot of the gray. Um, I still think, you know, a little more sanding to take some of this last stuff off. Um, but, again, there are nicks and dings in the wood that I don't want to sand all the way out because there'll be nothing left of the wood. So, we're getting there. 
sand that little piece down and then reattach it. I'm not 100% certain what that is for. I know the backstay, I think the backstay leans up against it and it looks like it was just held on with four small brads. But I started with 120 grit paper. I figured I could always go coarser if I thought 120 grit wasn't taking it down enough. But I think it is a little bit more sanding and we'll be good. Okay, so I spent a couple of hours down here. Um, you, can, you can see that here is the port forward piece of the tow rail, and here is the stern piece of the tow rail. Here is the rest of the port tow rail. Uh, here's another piece of it. This, this is one of the ones that was damaged. And the wood is not rotten here. It just split off. So I'm going to put in a lot of West System epoxy and epoxy it back in to this spot. And that will clean this up. Unfortunately, at the other end of this section, 
<clears throat> it was a scarf joint. You can tell that's not a scarf joint. Here, you can see the cut there, and then this little seam all the way along there. That is the scarf joint. Unfortunately, the glue in the scarf joint was stronger than the wood, and so the wood split off. The challenge that I have is this piece, I don't want to glue it together because then the piece will suddenly be, I don't know, 15 feet long, and that's really awkward to have down here in the shop. I'm going to try heat and see if I can loosen up the glue enough to pull the scarf joint apart, and then I can glue the wood back on, and when we get it back out on the boat, you know, put the scarf joint together on the boat itself after everything has been sort of sanded and refinished down here. So, I have sanded these two pieces down. They look pretty darn good compared to, you know, what it will look like on the boat. I have not sanded this one down yet. It's all completely scraped and cleaned up because I want to get it all glued back together again on both ends and then try to, you know, sand it once these things have been glued back together again. So, I'm going to mix up some epoxy and see if I can glue this end together. And while that's kicking, I'll work on taking the scarf joint apart on the other side. I'm going to get things ready and then get the camera rolling again. I have everything ready. A plethora of clamps, because you can never have too many clamps. Um, brush, gloves, West System epoxy, and the two pieces I'm going to need. So, let's uh, see what we can do to try to get this fixed. I don't need my respirator, because West System, like most epoxies, doesn't really give off a lot of volatile organics, unlike the acetone you use to clean it up with. So I took a wire brush to it and got as much of the dirt off as I can. Nice thing about West, like most of the epoxies, the pumps are set up so that one pump each gives you the correct mixture. You always scrape down the sides of the cup, stir like crazy to make sure that the catalyst is fully mixed in with the resin. It's relatively cool down here today, so I don't have to worry about my pot life. Um, epoxy is an exothermic reaction. It generates heat, unlike an endothermic, which requires heat. So, the problem is when it gives off heat, is what's in the pot gives off heat and actually starts cooking itself and making the it catalyze faster and faster and faster. So, if it's a warm day, you want to spread the epoxy out as quickly as you can um, so that it dissipates the heat rather than putting the heat into itself and forcing a reaction. Like I said, don't really have to worry about that today because it's relatively cool down here in the shop. Oop. I thought that might happen. Okay, so that little bit of material that came out is not going to be a problem. The epoxy will tend to fill in. Um. 
I'm record. I'm filming right now, so. And I like to put epoxy on both surfaces because the epoxy is West system, stands for wood epoxy saturation technique. So the epoxy does soak into the wood so that if you prep both surfaces, if the epoxy soaks in a little bit, you still have enough in there to create the adhesion. And you'll see once I start clamping this together, it'll definitely be squeeze out. Okay, get that out of the way. The nice thing about the Jorgensen's, since this tow rail is at an angle, I can adjust the hand screw so that it sort of matches the same profile as the tow rail. So, you can see a good squeeze out all the way along the joint. I did put a piece of plastic tape on the outside of the wood, which helps to prevent the clamps from gluing to the wood itself. Um, I'm actually going to pull this clamp off and put tape on the inside of it because it's pretty sticky there and I don't want it sticking to the tow rail. over the end of the tape so that I can try to find it again. 
boy, it drives me crazy when that doesn't happen and it takes 20 minutes to find the end of the tape. All right. No, nope, not gonna happen. Now, clamps are too slippery. So it wants to just slide right off the bottom. Well, this is very annoying. My GoPro batteries keep crapping out on me. All right, so the um, Now that I've got the tape on it so that it won't stick, the clamp is suddenly too slippery to grab onto the wood. Especially when I put the clamp at such an extreme angle so that it'll clamp together. But if I let it slide all the way down so that the threads are resting, then it won't be able to slide down anymore. And now I can clamp it on. All right, that looks good. And then I can use this clamp way up here at the tip to glue that in. Okay, I think we're good now. So, I'll try to clean off my stirring stick as much as possible so that I can reuse that. Paintbrush, I will not reuse. I'll just leave that in the epoxy. And that way, when that kicks, I'll know that we're good. All right, well, that's it. I'm going to call it a day today. I have got, again, the couple of pieces of the tow rail done with this big, big piece here, scraped all the caulking cleaned off the bottom of it, or the bedding compound cleaned off the bottom of it. It's uh, all the finish scraped off of it. This end epoxied together. Yeah, you know what? While I'm here, I may try to heat this and see if I can open up that joint. Um, I can just slide this out and hit it with the uh, hot air gun and see what happens. I have to clamp it down to the bench so that it doesn't move. I'll play with it a little bit. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay, so you can see the joint. Again, it runs right along here. And here, if I press down, you can see that it opens up just a little bit. So this side is not glued. It's just glued along there. The question is how do we get the heat all the way through the wood to loosen up the glue without burning the wood. Well, a sharp wrap is not breaking the glue joint. Unfortunately. Now 
Now we see that. So this joint is just starting to open up by driving that chisel into it. We'll see if we can keep doing that. Son of a gun. Guess what? There is a screw in there. But since I pulled it most of the way out, I will take it the rest of the way. All right, so this piece goes on this end and after this is all cured and kicked, I can unclamp this, reverse it, go and clamp the other end together, and then we'll be able to sand this one down and we'll have more than half of the port tow rail done. And we'll just have these last two pieces, hopefully get them done tomorrow. A little piece that goes in there, I don't know where this one goes. We'll figure that out. Well, it's another day. Another day. Yeah, it's Sunday. Uh, I looked out this morning and the cover on the boat had shifted, so I spent about an hour this morning peeling the cover off, screwing some legs back onto the framework, and then put the cover back on the boat. Um, not what I was hoping to do today, but at least it's not raining, it's a little bit warmer out there, and the storm that's coming in tonight is going to be a lot of rain and maybe turning to snow and freezing rain. So it was appropriate to get the cover done right now. Last night, uh, I came down, the epoxy had kicked, and one end of the tow rail looks like it's in pretty good shape. So that's this section here. It's all glued up. Um, looks pretty good, so now I can sand that down. And then I epoxied this other end on also. Um, so now I'm going to sand up this section. Then the last one we have to do is this, and that would mean the entire port tow rail is in the initial prep stage. Um, I think they still needs a little bit more sanding, but that'll be the whole port one. And then I have these two pieces and these two pieces up here, and that would be the entire starboard tow rail. Um, we do know that the starboard one also has some repair that needs to be done on it. This uh, big split here, but again, the wood inside 
is not rotten. It's in really good shape. So I think a lot of epoxy and clamps will clamp that all together. And then once it's sanded and refinished, you'll never know. Well, you will know, but it won't look horrible. So that's the plan for this afternoon. It's three o'clock. We'll give it an hour or so, maybe a couple hours, and we'll see what we get done. So I just spent a few minutes sanding this first piece down. I'll give you a quick update. So this is what it looks like after sanding. Here is the split. I don't know where it ends. But you can see a little teeny line there. I think it went up and came up through here. But if it's that difficult for me to find it, then I think the repair was successful. Down here at this end, it's good, but it's not perfect. I'm going to have to do a little bit of filling um, and then sand down a little bit more. So, in general, repairs in wood work out quite well. You can almost make them completely invisible. All right, well, I am done with this. You can see, sort of, right there is the seam in the repair. The crack came all the way down here and went down that way. And came up here and turned the corner, almost completely invisible. This side, the crack went all the way up here and then came back. So, a little bit there. The problem though is I can't sand this down too too much because there's another board that comes in there and if I make this too thin that's going to sit proud so we may have to live with that a little bit of discoloration there but that's not too too bad again I'm looking at it from inches away and this is going to be on a boat and people are going to be looking at it from meters away here this definitely needs a little bit of a fil of filler but, see the line all the way through here, it really doesn't look, you know, you can't see anything on this side, which is the outboard side, which is awesome. So this is the inboard side, and there's a little bit of evidence, but again, some wood filler and sand that down, and that'll almost completely disappear. And again, it's way up by the bow, inboard on the tow rail. So far less of an issue than I considered. So this is, and, and this is where the jib track goes. So it's going to hide all of this caulking. We're going to put more caulking or bedding compound in there before the jib track goes down on it. So as long as this is what's showing and that's what's showing and that's what's finished and it looks good, I'm very happy. So this is what the tow rail looks like now. And this is what the tow rail looked like when we started. Quite a difference. The top. So, I think it looks pretty darn good and I can't wait to see it finished and back on the boat.
a little frustrating right now. I thought I had the entire port side completed and I cleaned up and started to get the starboard side pieces down and discovered that the one starboard piece that needs work, you can see this is the one that's got the split and fortunately, you know, the wood is okay. It's not rotten and I can just glue it all back together again. But that one is really long and when I looked at this piece and saw the scrape marks on it, I thought, hmm, I think that was the port side forward when I was looking for additional fastenings. So, uh, and then I took a tape measure and measured, and those pieces over there that are refinished for the port side are not 32 feet long. These three here added together come out to about 30 feet, so I'm pretty sure that this is another of the port pieces. Darn. So I thought I had the port side all finished, but it appears that I don't. So anyway, um, it is late enough on Sunday afternoon that I'm going to call it a day. Next week, hopefully I'll finish up this last piece of the port side and get all the rest of the starboard side pieces done. I may even get the cockpit combing uh, out and try to scrape those down and get those refinished. I have discovered through this work that this uh, woodwork is teak and it's not mahogany. Um, I thought it was mahogany because it was bright um, and normally you know, you're not varnishing teak, um, but it appears the previous people did. Um, and I'm going to, I'm looking at the, the wood now, you can see that that color is definitely teak. And looking at this, that was why I thought it was mahogany because it looked like it had been varnished bright work. Um, that being said, there are other treatments I can use for teak. I'm not a fan of teak oil because it needs to be reapplied multiple times during the season to keep the teak looking nice. Um, there are a couple of other teak treatments that I can use that are similar to a bright work. Um, more applications, more coats go on initially, and it's a lot more durable. And that's the key, is something that's durable so that the finish will last, you don't have to reapply it multiple times, and at the end of the season you don't have to strip it all down and start over again. So that's my goal with the teak, and I would like to get by next weekend, uh, strip down again these tow rails and the combing, and then I've got all of the exterior woodwork of the boat stripped down and ready for finish. Um, I really would like to get the outside of the boat done this year, and then we can splash, sail the boat around, and then next season work on the interior. Um, so anyway, that's where I am today, and that's what my thought process is. But thank you for watching. Um, please hit the like button. It doesn't cost you guys anything and just helps out my channel. Um, subscribe because having more subscribers is definitely good for my channel. And that way you get notified when new videos come out. So thank you very much for watching SV Slow Air and I look forward to seeing you again.